Good morning and welcome to worship. Our worship service this morning online is the same service uh, with a few modifications as our drive-in worship service this morning. The theme for our drive-in services is the garden path and this morning we will center on ruined gardens. We have a new banner for our sanctuary uh, it was designed by Carolyn Middleton and uh, sewn and quilted by Margaret Hanselman. It goes with our theme of gardens and um, the tree of life. We give thanks to them for sharing their gifts to the glory of God with us. We are pleased to be able to provide this service online for those of you who are joining us from a distance or are not yet comfortable in joining us at our drive-in service. I invite you to create kind of your own sacred space at home, and maybe a cup of coffee or tea, and to light a candle as we prepare our hearts and our minds for worship. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law he meditates day and night. He is like a tree planted by streams of water, that yields its fruit in its season, and its leaf does not wither. In all that he does, he prospers. The wicked are not so, but are like chaff that the wind drives away. Our opening hymn this morning is Gather Us In. Sandy and Rachel and Amy will be singing.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we give you praise and thanks for the gift of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who came to deliver us from the sin that would separate us from you and from one another. By the power of your Spirit, lead us to take delight in your word, to study it, and to grow in faith and knowledge, so that we might better serve you and our neighbor through works of love and service. Hear our prayer and accept our praise in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Amen. We're going to move into our children's time here. And I brought something with me. Uh-oh. What happened? These flowers don't look very good. They're all kind of bent and wilting. They used to be so beautiful. Hmm. Why do these flowers look like this? They used to be growing. And then for a while after they were cut, they were kept in water and they still looked fresh and beautiful. But now they've been cut from their stems for a long time and they haven't had any water. So they're dried up and they're kind of ruined. Oh. When God put Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, he gave them work to do. They were to care for the garden that God had made for them. It was happy work, and that everything grew well in God's garden. But then Adam and Eve disobeyed God. They sinned, and they ate fruit from the tree that God told them not to eat. God sent them out of the garden, and they would still grow food to eat, but it would be hard work. Crops would grow, but so would weeds and thorns. Sin brought ruin. But God promised Adam and Eve that someday he would send a savior to crush the devil who had tempted them to do wrong. Sin brings ruin to our lives. We may become angry and say unkind things to others. We may tell a lie to cover up something that we have done. We don't obey our parents like we should. But God kept the promise that he made to Adam and Eve. He sent Jesus to be our savior. And Jesus died for us and rose from the dead. Because of Jesus, our sins are forgiven. The ruin of sin is taken away. We have a new life in Jesus. and we will live forever let's pray Jesus thank you for taking away the ruin of sin help us to share your love and forgiveness with others amen our readings this morning our first reading from the Old Testament comes from the First Kings, beginning with the 21st chapter, the first verse. Now Naboth, the Jezreelite, had a vineyard in Jezreel, beside the palace of Ahab, king of Samaria. And after this, Ahab said to Naboth, Give me your vineyard, that I may have it for a vegetable garden, because it is near my house, and I will give you a better vineyard for it. Or, if it seems good to you, I will give you its value in money. But Naboth said to Ahab, The Lord forbid that I should give you the inheritance of my fathers. And Ahab went into his house vexed and sullen because of what Naboth, the Jezreelite, had said to him. For he had said, I will not give you the inheritance of my fathers. And he lay down on his bed and turned away his face and would eat no food. 
And Jezebel, his wife, said to him, Do you now govern Israel? Arise and eat bread and let your heart be cheerful. I will give you the vineyard of Naboth, the Jezreelite. So she wrote letters in Ahab's name and sealed them with his seal. And she sent the letters to the elders and the leaders who lived with Naboth in his city. And she wrote in the letters, Proclaim a feast, a fast, and set Naboth at the head of the people, and set two worthless men opposite him, and let them bring a charge against him, saying, You have cursed God and the king. Then take him out and stone him to death. And the men of his city, the elders and the leaders who lived in his city, did as Jezebel had sent word to them. Then they sent to Jezebel, saying, Naboth has been stoned. He is dead. Our epistle reading this morning comes from the book of James, the first chapter. Blessed is the man who remains steadfast under trial. For when he has stood the test, he will receive the crown of life, which God has promised to those who love him. Let no one say when he is tempted, I am being tempted by God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, and he himself tempts no one. But each person is tempted when he is lured and enticed by his own desire. Then desire, when it was conceived, gives birth to sin. And sin, when it is fully grown, brings forth death. Do not be deceived, my beloved brothers. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. Of his own will, he brought us forth by the word of truth, that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. And our gospel reading this morning comes from the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the fourth chapter. The sowers, the sower sows the word, and these are the ones along the path where the word is sown. When they hear, Satan immediately comes and takes away the word that is sown in them. And these are the ones sown on rocky ground, the ones who, when they hear the word, immediately receive it with joy. And they have no root in themselves, but endure for a while. Then when tribulation or persecution arises on account of the word, immediately they fall away. And others are the ones shown among thorns. They are those who hear the word, but the cares of the world and the deceitfulness of riches and the desires for other things enter in and choke the word, and it proves unfruitful. But those that were sown on the good soil are the ones who hear the word and accept it and bear fruit, thirtyfold and sixtyfold, and a hundredfold. This is the word of the Lord. The Old Testament people of Israel followed the prophet of Moses and Joshua, Moses' successor, into the Promised Land. The Israelites followed these earthly leaders, but God was their king. They were finally settled in their new land, but when, because of their unfaithfulness, God allowed enemies to oppress them, and the people cried out for help. God raised up judges, which were temporary military and political leaders, to save them. Leaders such as Deborah and Gideon, Samson and Samuel. Finally, the Israelites decided that they wanted to be like the nations surrounding them. They didn't want judges. They were not even satisfied with God as their king. They wanted an earthly king. Through the prophet Samuel, God spoke words of warning that they would get the king they wanted so badly, but they would get a lot more along with him. 
and they would not like it. Kings, Samuel told the people, will take your sons to be his horsemen and soldiers. He will take your daughters to be servants and cooks. The king will take the best of your fields and vineyards and orchards. He will even take your servants and your donkeys. Still, the people wanted a king, and so God gave them one. Saul was anointed as Israel's king. At first, things went well, but in the end, Saul disobeyed the Lord, the Lord and lost the kingdom. God appointed David as the next king, and David ruled well, but as God had warned, kings take what they want. King David took the wife of one of his soldiers as his own and arranged for the husband to be murdered in battle. David repented of his sin, but the child born to him died. Then David had another son, Solomon. And Solomon was Israel's wealthiest and wisest king. Yet in the end, he too disobeyed God. The Israelites had been told by God not to marry those from nations around them. And Solomon took 700 wives and 300 concubines most from other nations. And as God had warned, the king began to worship the gods of his wives. The royal evil grew worse. Under Solomon's son, the nation was split into two kingdoms because of his harsh rule. And while they were faithful kings who followed, of king after king, scripture says, his heart was not wholly true to the Lord his God. So when Ahab became king, scripture says of him, Ahab did evil in the sight of the Lord, more than all who were before him, and did more to provoke the Lord, the God of Israel, to anger than all the kings of Israel who were before him. Ahab and his queen, Jezebel, left a trail of broken commandments behind them as their reign continued. Ahab, as king, could have anything that he wanted, but he wanted the one thing that he couldn't have, violating the commandment against coveting. Ahab wanted the vineyard of his neighbor Naboth, thinking that Naboth's plot of land would be a perfect location for a new royal garden, Naboth refused because he would not give up the land that was his inheritance. Ahab sulked until Jezebel took care of the problem. She ordered lies told about Naboth, violating the commandment about false witnesses, which resulted in Naboth's murder violating the commandment against murder. The stolen vineyard, in violation of the commandment against theft, became Ahab's garden. Sin brings ruin. As it ruined the garden of God so long ago in Eden, sin brings ruined relationships with God, with one another, and with the garden world that is our home. The Apostle James wrote that each of us is tempted to sin when we are lured and enticed by our own desire. Then desire, when it was, has conceived, gives birth to sin, and sin, when it is fully grown, brings forth death. Eve desired the fruit that was forbidden. Her desire led to sin as she ate the fruit and gave it to Adam. Their sin brought death into the world. Ahab desired Naboth's plot of land. He sinned, committing murder to get what he desired. 
bringing God's judgment and finally the penalty of death on himself and his king, queen. As much as we might like to take pride in our own reasonably pure lives, we cannot look on Adam and Eve or Ahab and Jezebel as the only guilty ones who break commandments and ruin gardens. We need to examine our own lives in a mirror, the crystal bright mirror of God's law, to see clearly that we are descendants of those first sinners, our first parents, Adam and Eve. The apple has not fallen far from the family tree. Just a few of God's commandments provide enough to reflect accurately our condition. The commandments forbid the misuse of God's holy name. Have you found yourself in moments of anger, swearing, good Lord, or oh my God? The common OMG of social media really isn't a prayer. We might feel safe when we consider the commandment against murder. We haven't actually committed murder, but then we read what scripture says. Everyone who hates his brother is a murderer. When it comes to the commandment against committing adultery, it takes only a brief glance at the world around us to see the temptations that beckon. Jesus said, everyone who looks at a woman with lustful intent has already committed adultery with her in his heart. The commandments against coveting are a warning against our desire to have what others have, to want something so badly that we would do almost anything to get it. That seed of coveting grew in Ahab into a thorny bush that held and choked him. We all know that covetous seed can all too easily do the same to us. But God, in God's grace, has planted through faith another seed in our lives. The seed of the word. The Apostle Peter tells us that we have been born again not of perishable seed, but of Im imperishable, through the living and abiding word of God. This word is the good news that was preached to you. That seed of life is the good news concerning the death and resurrection of Jesus, who perfectly kept every one of the commandments. The sinless Lamb of God suffered the death penalty that we deserve for our sin, for every violation, these holy commands. He died, was buried, and was raised to life on the third day, overcoming sin and death and Satan and winning the victory for us. Because of Jesus' death on the cross, because he took our death sentence into himself, our sins are forgiven, are washed away in his blood. In his resurrection, we have the gift of eternal life, firmly grounded in the Savior's promise, because I live, you shall also live. Jesus' perfect obedience to every command of God covers our own disobedience and rebellion against our Creator. We stand newly created in the sight of God, dressed through baptism in Jesus' own holiness, dressed in his right relationship with the Heavenly Father. The relationship lost in Eden's garden has been restored in Christ Jesus. Now we hear the word of our God, and that word falls on good soil, the soil of hearts redeemed in Christ, repentant hearts that receive the forgiveness won at the cross. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, the seed of the word takes root in our hearts and lives and bears fruit 
to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, through your death and resurrection, we have forgiveness for our sins and the gift of eternal life in your presence. Help us to follow each day in your footsteps of love and, and service toward others. Lord Jesus, we pray for those who are suffering from illness, loss, grief, or fear. Especially Dan, Marilyn, Lisa, Jim Q and his family, AJ, Marlene, Kathy, Joe, Jason and his family, Cheryl, Candy, Ian, 
Ling, Kathy, Connie, Tom, Mara, Lexi, Jerry, Luann, Thad, Taylor, and those we name in our hearts. Give us opportunities to speak your word of comfort and peace to them. Lord Jesus, we pray for all teachers and administrators as they make multiple plans that continue to change for educating our children this fall. For parents who have to decide this week how their children will do school this year. Lord Jesus, we pray for exhausted, overwhelmed medical staff as they care for COVID patients. We especially lift up to you this morning Michelle and her co-workers working in a psych hospital in Tennessee. As their local numbers of cases of COVID are rising and they are being required to take COVID patients without the proper medical training or enough proper PPE. Lord Jesus, we pray for those who are grieving the death of loved ones. We especially lift up to you the families and friends of Jim Weston and Sue. May they be comforted by their memories and the assurance of your everlasting love. Lord Jesus, you have called us to be your witnesses in the garden of this world, a world still lost in the darkness of sin. Fill us with your spirit and make us bold in our witness so that through the gospel word, others will come to know and worship you as Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. This is the time that we usually receive our tithes and offerings. The ministry of the church continues in our community and in the country and around the world. And so I invite you to mail your offerings to the church. We have also added online giving for, through our website. And this is a wonderful opportunity for those of you uh, who might be visiting with us this morning or just prefer to give online. With your generosity, we have already received some, and so we offer a prayer of thanksgiving. Blessed are you, O God, maker of all things. Through your goodness, you have blessed us with these gifts ourselves, our time, and our possessions. Use us and what we have gathered in feeding the world with your love through the one who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. A big thank you to Sandy Oswell and Rachel Bailey for coming and joining Amy and I this morning. What a blessing to have your voices added to the music this morning. Next week, our online worship service will be led by members of the Southeast Michigan Synod. It will be primarily led by our brothers and sisters in the ELCA congregations in Detroit. I am looking forward to the gospel that they will share with us. Please plan to join us on Facebook at 930 or on our website. And now, neither death nor life nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. God the Creator, Jesus the Christ, 
and the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, bless you and keep you in eternal love. Amen. Our closing hymn this morning is What a Friend We Have in Jesus. Go in peace. Christ is with you.